So just recently, I have finished uh, Detroit Become Human, and it's frank to say that this game is, wow, I've got quite a few words about Detroit Become Human. So first things first, um, I want to give some praise to Detroit Become Human. So the voice acting is pretty good. I'll give it that. The voice acting is strong. It's got it's got tons of emotion and range. I'll, I'll give it that. And the motion capture is absolutely beautiful. I mean, if you haven't played um, Beyond Two Souls or Heavy Rain, you're missing out, man. Well, uh, Beyond Two Souls is a bit iffy. Try out Heavy Rain. But the motion capture in, in Beyond Two Souls was amazing, especially with how they captured uh, Ellen Page's face. I'll give it that. It's pretty good. But it's just... <laughs> Oh man, there's so much. There are so many gripes I have with this story. So first off, okay. First off, I want to talk about all three characters. Well, I'm gonna to give a little context. I'm gonna summarize a little bit. I'm not gonna summarize the entire plot, but just I'm gonna summarize some of the plot for some context. So the game takes place in the year 2038 in in the city of Detroit, Michigan. Now, during this time, androids are like kind of like these household servants of some sort. They what they do is they do the usual stuff around the house. They're like a they're like a maid of some sort. You know they they you know they cook, they clean. You know they get your stuff ready, do stuff like that. So andro and androids are pretty lifelike. Not only that, but androids have also taken over um, all of the jobs in have taken over all of the jobs. Well, not all the jobs, but like a majority of the jobs in America, leaving lots of people homeless, as, which is why many people in the game have this like disdain toward androids. So, <laughs> so anyways, you play as three characters and their and their stories intertwine with each other one way or another. You play as Connor. Uh, you play as Connor, Kara and Marcus. Connor's story is all right. So Connor is a is an android that was made by Cyberlife, the company that manufactures all the androids. So anyway, Connor's um, function as an android is to basically be a detective. His job is to find other like his job is to catch deviants. And if you and if you don't know what deviants are, deviants are androids that go rogue. Um, essentially, they're androids that gain emotion and then they go out and commit some crime or something, or they run away. So yeah, that's what a deviant android is. Um, anyways, Connor's job is to is to go and catch these deviants and um, interrogate them, or <laughs> or if worse comes to worse, either or even kill them. Well, that I think that's the police's job because what, when they see an android do something bad, they shoot sight and scene, you know. But still, um, Connor. So yeah, Connor. He has to catch all these androids. He's a detective for the Detroit Police Department. So, anyways, yeah, you play as Connor, the police android. There, then you play as Kara. Kara is the household android that does all the usual stuff that I mentioned beforehand. And one day, um, her owner abuses her. As a matter of fact, it's even implied at the beginning of Kara's story that the owner abused her so much that she had to be taken in for repairs. I'm not kidding. And this idiot's excuse for why she's in the um, for why she's in the repair plant is that she got hit by a car. <laughs> oh man, what a terrible excuse. So, anyways. One day, um, one day, Kara, I mean, Kara's owner, um, his name is Todd, who is a very, very horrible person. He's an utter piece of shit. He, one day he abuses, he starts abusing um, Alice, and it's implied that she's been abused, like, in the past before like this. So anyways, um, he starts trying to beat Alice, and then uh, Kara intervenes, and um, they run away together into Detroit. So once they, once they do run away, then they're, like, basically fugitives, essentially. So, Yeah. They're going and getting into all kinds of crazy shit and just yeah, stuff's happening. I I did the character. The, I didn't like Kara's story at all. It just it wasn't good. Um. Last but not least is Marcus. Now Marcus is an android that just had terrible. That just had all the oh man, so many bad stuff happened. So much bad stuff happened to him from the start. So firstly, what happened is um was the owner. His name is Carl. Now, oh, sorry. Um, so Carl, he is a painter in Detroit, and he's very famous. He's attending all kinds of parties and stuff. He's attending all kinds of art galleries, stuff like that. So, anyways, one day, um, one day, Carl's son comes there asking for money, and um, they get into a heated argument over about over money, and then like, um, and then Leo starts like getting on. I mean, like just getting on, like harassing, um, harassing Marcus. So. You have the option to either defend against uh, to defend against Leo, or just just take the abuse or whatever. 
Anyways, this is where it gets really stupid. Apparently, if you defend against Leo, I don't know how strong androids are, but if you defend against Leo, um, Marcus will push him or shove him, whatever. So Marcus shoves him, and I don't know how strong this man is. He shoves him so hard that he lands into a railing and dies from a fractured skull. Anyways, the police arrive on time because of a because they thought that someone was bringing in their house. But then the police um, go, the police, what they do is they shoot Marcus and they toss him into an android graveyard. Well, not graveyard. It's a junkyard. So that's actually a place. Um, so the game does a good job showing us what happens to androids that don't do their job properly. What happens like when they get destroyed? Pretty neat stuff. But then it starts falling apart like after that. So yeah, Marcus, he, after surviving the junkyard, after like putting himself together and putting all these other little audio, like this little audio processor in his ear or something, and he cuts out his LED, which is like, no, it's on this side of the head, yeah. So after like cutting out his LED right there, then he decides that he wants to try and free all the androids, and that's where the game's plot really begins, in my opinion. Because the game is about like this kind of civil rights type deal. I don't know what to make of it. So anyway, after after that, like um, you switch between the characters and their stories and stuff. So I want to get into like the choices you make. I'm not gonna. What I mean is I'm not gonna start talking about choices specifically, but how they affect the story. Well, the outcome of the story themselves. So the so the choices are hit or miss. They'll either have an effect on the story or just not at all, and just be either completely unnecessary or just a waste of time altogether. And I was actually starting to get that feel, get that feeling of them like just being completely unnecessary, one well, just wasting your time. I actually had that same feeling when I played Beyond Two Souls in middle back in middle school five years ago. <laughs> yeah, your choices, none of your choices matter in that game. I'm sorry. So, anyways, you, um, so anyways, you have to um, you have to stay on your toes when playing this game because you can actually die unexpectedly. And by the way, I've replayed through multiple chapters multiple times to prevent uh, to prevent a death I never saw coming. <laughs> um, oh man! So another thing I want to talk about is the whole civil rights thing with the androids. The I understand what they were going for: civil rights for you know these androids. They're being treated like slaves. They're being beaten. They're being treated like objects. You know, I understand what they were going for, but it was done and executed so poorly. It was horrible man so <laughs> so later on in the game you get to lead a um you get to lead this little civil rights movement uh against the humans on how they're mistreating androids and it just goes downhill from there so in the game you have in the game you have what's called a public opinion thing well i call it a thing because it's a thing it's i don't know so anyways, you have what's called a this little public opinion meter, whatever you want to call it. So the public opinion um, meter determines how, um, determines how people react to you, the player, and the choices that you make. For example, when Kara was trying to um, cross the Canadian border and someone discovered that she was in, well, and one of the border patrol discovered that she was an android, um, he looked over at the TV screen and he did not, and he decided not to call the police. So and he let her pass through the Canadian border. And that's only if you get the um, if you get like a good amount of public support. If you get bad public support, then yeah, they're not gonna like you. And and looking back on it, I probably I realized that 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 border patrol officer was probably gonna um, was probably gonna snitch on her the second he saw those androids like rioting in the streets or something. Um, and you know it's a bit hit or miss. And I also want to talk about the little contradictions in each character. Well, not each character, but in Marcus's goals. Marcus, I understand what he wants to do. I mean, you know, he wants to like stop from being a slave, stop being mistreated, stop being abused, stop being beaten. I understand that. However, I just don't get it because, um, well, not, I just not get it. But I just don't get how he's trying to do all that stuff. Yet during when the FBI raided the Jericho headquarters, which, which by the way, a uh, little tangent here, Jericho is like this little, um, Jericho is this little. I'd say like gathering of androids that are trying to be free. You know, they're like a support group for each other, you know, whenever they be free from their owners, you know? So anyways, um, when the FBI stormed the Jericho headquarters, Marcus outright kills some of the FBI, um, F some of the FBI officers in, in self-defense. I, I mean, yeah, he was defending himself, but he could have at least shot a kneecap or something. The dude outright shoots the, uh, the officers. The reason why I'm bringing up the fact that he kills the officers is because, um, Early on in the story, you can do a um, 
early on in the story, you can do a little um, protest, right? You can choose to have the protest be um, be violent or nonviolent. Now, I decided to go the nonviolent route because I felt like that was the right thing to do, and I didn't want to spill any blood. Well, <laughs> I can't say the same about the androids that got shot down during that protest. <laughs> But anyways, um, I did. I wanted to do it without getting, uh, without getting any, uh, like having anyone killed or hurt. But, but when Marcus like shoots those FBI officers on the Jericho HQ, it flies in the face of the nonviolent, uh, of the nonviolent path. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I mean, yeah, he was shooting in self defense, and yeah, it's something like you do in the heat of the moment. You know, you you're fighting for your wife, but still, it just flies in the face of his. Of what he's trying to achieve or what he's trying to accomplish so yeah now i have to talk about one really stupid plot twist um involving kara's story kara's story is okay so at the near end of kara's story what happened when she reaches the jericho headquarters and this is before the fbi storms it when she reaches the jericho um headquarters um this this black android his name is luther he um he's like um he says to Kara, hey, I want to talk to you about something. It's about Alice, that you know, that girl you saved. And the thing is that what's really stupid, I hate these kinds of things in stories. When someone goes like, hey, I want to talk to you about something, it's pretty serious, and then the main character just shrugs it off, like, no, no, let's talk about it later. I ruined that frustrated me to no end. So, anyways, we later find out what um we later find out what Luther was trying to talk to us about. Luther was trying to tell us that Alice was an android this whole time. I don't... <laughs> what? Alice is an android? No. I find it hard to believe that, mainly because um, when you... Because during that chapter, which is like the early hours of the game, when uh, Alice and... Um, when Alice and Kara are hiding out in that abandoned house in like a... In a Detroit suburb. Well, it wasn't really a suburb, but it was something. I don't know. So when they were hiding in that abandoned house, um, Connor goes to investigate it under the suspicion that there's a deviant hiding there, and um, and there that also that other deviant Ralph there, the dude with the like messed up face, like his face was messed up on this side. Um, he's yeah, he's there. So Connor starts doing detective work and he starts trying to you know find out where Kara is so he can bring her back to her owner or presumably just have her destroyed or erase her memory. I guess that's like a repercussion. <laughs> so anyways. When Connor goes to investigate the area, you can you use this little detective mode. Uh, I like to call it detective mode, you know, because like in, in the old in the Batman Arkham games, you know, there's a detective mode where Batman gets to see stuff. Anyways, um, you get, Connor goes into this detective mode, and when you look at the fireplace, it says that androids don't need heat, implying that Alice is a human somehow, and Alice is an android, and it's also implied that androids don't really feel the same way we do. I <laughs> what? I, so what was the point of that? Maybe I'm not seeing it right. Maybe I missed something. I don't know. But what was the point of that stupid little plot twist? This is just, I don't know, man. And so I know, I know I'm getting like, I know I'm just legit kind of pissed off at like some of the, at the structure of these, of this plot, man. And at some of these characters and the characters are very, they're badly underdeveloped. Earlier, I praised the voice acting and the motion capture, but that doesn't change the way the characters, oh man, that doesn't change the, the poor development, man. So we've got, so Kara is just, I understand that she's an android and everything, but even she's underdeveloped. The reason I didn't like her story is because it was so shallow, especially like even when you get to that guy's, um, as a matter of fact, some of Kara's story is based off of Heavy Rain. Uh, spoilers for Heavy Rain, by the way, if you haven't played, um, if you haven't played Heavy Rain, uh, this is your chance to turn away for spoilers, or go to the uh, go to the timestamp if I ever leave one. So, anyways, um, in Heavy Rain, there's this little in the director's cut version of Heavy Rain. There's this little thing where um, that where that news reporter I keep forgetting her name. That news reporter she goes to this house uh, under suspicion that this guy is the origami killer. So this guy has like a bunch of taxidermy people in there, and it's just all out creepy and gross. Yeah. So, anyways. Alice and Kara, they go to this um, old dude's house out in the middle of suburban Detroit, and they find out that this dude has been experimenting and torturing androids just for the just because he can, really. <laughs> and like he has leftover androids from his experiments and stuff. Like this is based off the taxidermist from Heavy Rain Director's Cut edition. <laughs> I don't know, man. 
and I could draw so many similarities with Heavy Rain, like with Connor being a cop. I mean, Connor, um, Connor almost resembles Norman Jaden, the detective dude from Heavy Rain. I, I, he just slightly resembles him. He almost does. <laughs> I know, I, and I know that I'm going all over the place and my thoughts are disorganized in this video, but it's just that I I just got off of beating this game and I just need someone to rant to this game about. I mean, I ranted in Discord about it and, you know, nobody gave a shit. Well, actually, well, one person and I, we were discussing it uh, in detail, but yeah. So, yeah, that comes to the end of this video. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on Detroit Become Human or thoughts on the plot or overall st structure or stuff on, on Detroit Become Human. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys.